how do you know that if you have intense chemistry, this is not just somebody else who's going to break your heart. Thank you so much for joining us today on Second Act TV. Very happy to welcome back Trevor Brandon Scharf, the dating coach, life coach, fitness expert, and author. Trevor, thank you so much for being Just here keep again. Going. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we always have so much fun. I, I'm glad you're back again. Today, uh, a topic that I know that both of us have discussed before, you know, how do you know that if you have intense chemistry, this is not just somebody else who's going to break your heart, especially in this world of online dating? Great topic. Been there, done that, felt that, dated that. I'm all over it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about that. It, it, it's true. We tend to let chemistry dictate something immediately where we might be passing up people that we can actually have a really good relationship with. There's, there's five questions you can ask yourself that might give you an indication whether or not you're acting on um, chemistry or, you know, or not. Number one, do you lose yourself in a relationship? Meaning that, you know, your friends right away tell you if you're dating somebody else, hey, you're not available anymore, that, that immediately you put this person first after yourself. Talk to me about that. I think that's less a chemistry issue uh, than it is more of an attachment problem. Um, people who have anxious attachment style tend to lose themselves and uh, because of fear that, oh my God, if I'm not totally available, if I'm not there, you know, if I don't pick up the phone or if I don't answer a text or um, if I'm, if I'm not free on a certain day or night, it's, it's, you know, doesn't, it bodes well, it doesn't bode well rather. And I don't, do you understand the difference between chemistry and attachment? It's more, that's more pathology to me than it is just pure chemistry. I, you know, that's a great, that's a great point. That's a really, really good point that it's more attachment than necessarily chemistry. I mean, I guess the point here is that if you do tend to fall into that pattern, if you will, uh, that you must be really attracted. To, I mean, I don't think an anxious person would do that to somebody they're not attracted to, but maybe they're not attracted in the right way. Does that make sense? Y yes. I mean, look, there's nothing wrong with being highly, highly attracted to someone. And that's good. That's a good thing. You, we want chemistry. You want, you know, to be um, attracted to someone and that feeling that you want to be physical and intimate. It, that's all healthy, good stuff to accept when it gets to a point where, yes, you lose yourself or rather it, it turns from chemistry and desire into fear mm. and desperation. And neediness. That's yeah. when it kind of, mm, you turn that sort of unhealthy corner. Yeah. Uh, another question they have here is, are you hyper-focused on chemistry? That do you reject someone outright uh, after one day because you don't feel intense chemistry? The, you know, I blame uh, online dating for that a lot too. Uh, not that it didn't exist before dating apps, but I'll tell you what, you know, the, the, with dating apps and the abundance of people and possibilities out there make it so that people, if they don't feel it on date one, forget it, you're out, you know, there's more. I'm gonna run home and see what else is online waiting for me because because now it's it's gotten to that. It's like people's attention span is so short and their desire to wanna to hang in there and, and learn about someone is, way, way shorter than it used to be. No, I agree with you. And that's one thing that I know you and I and, and on other interviews I do, other uh, experts we have on this channel, is to really get get that message out there that recognize that this is, this is a bad downside of online dating, that we reject people outright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes, right. Because, oh, well, if they aren't checking off every single box, you know, in the first date, well, okay, um, there's always like a thousand billion more yeah. out there. And that's not good. 
No, exactly. And they make a good point here, Seth, that remember you can have chemistry with someone who is not at all the kind of person that you're actually going to get along with. I mean, I get it. You know, first uh, or online dating is just a series of first dates. Like you were saying, if, if a person does check the other boxes, but maybe uh, the chemistry is quite there. I think in that case, it's a really good idea to maybe go on a second date. What do you think? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. D I mean, dating apps or no dating apps, right? You're really nervous on a first date. Mm -hmm. People aren't them aren't themselves. Yeah. yeah. The uh, next question, this is interesting. Um, are you addicted to the feeling of falling in love. What they're saying here is that, that falling in love can be so intoxicating that many scientists have equated it with the high that comes from high quality drugs. I think that's a real thing. Oh, that's a thing. <laughs> that's a thing. What's the, the Robert Palmer song? Na, 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 you're addicted to love. I'm addicted to na, love, yeah. Na, <laughs> what is it? You better start. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Addicted to love. That's funny. I guess that's really important to recognize that in yourself. I mean, I again, I've never really thought of that, that you can actually be addicted to that feeling that you get that high, that that flutter, the butterflies in your for, stomach. For sure. Yes. People, um, they kind of go for the, the, the buzz, mm -hmm. just like drugs. You know, you, you chase the buzz and then, and then when the buzz, when you come down and when it's, when you're not so high anymore and you start to sort of get sober and, and see, start seeing the person for who they are, you know, that's, that's when you know the difference between chemistry and connection. Well, and they don't realize that that's what it takes to make a relationship work. Some people just think if that if that goes away, that that instant lust is gone, then the relationship isn't isn't you know it's over or something is wrong. But that really is the key for the, you know those people who have been in very long relationships will tell you that it's very cyclical. Of course, yeah. I mean, I kind of I'm smiling as I'm telling you this because I sort of was that person because I was not ready to settle down mm -hmm. until I was like, nah, you know what? I want to I want to just I'm ready and I am a little older and I don't feel like um, going from from relationship to relationship. And that's sort of when things started to change and when I eventually met Robbie. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that we have that conversation at this point in our life. But if, if that's a pattern with you that you haven't recognized, you will bring that forward. Uh, and yeah, interesting. Are you addicted to love? I mean, we have to link to that song. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? What is it? What are the, the lyrics? You might as well you might face, as well it, face addicted, it. You're, you're addicted, addicted to, to love. love. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's it. We did it. <laughs> So if you if you find that that's what you're doing, stop doing it because it's not going to get you anywhere good. So <laughs> um, next one here is your subconscious sending you a warning. I think that that was interesting too. That fear and excitement feels the same in your body. Okay, fear and excitement uh, are very often confused with this is love. This is love. That is not true. Um, it is a little, it plays games with your mind and the fear and the anxiety is, um, they confuse that, like I said, with, it's like dating bad boys and crazy chicks. <laughs> it's that same, you know, he makes me, I'm worried. I'm wondering, I'm, I'm waiting, um, or she makes me nuts or she, she is, um, crazy and, and, uh, unstable. And that must be love. No, it's not, it's not, I guess, healthy love. Yeah. But if it's what you dig, if it's what you want, then who are we to stop you, I guess, right? Well, yeah, no, it, it, we're not. Uh, you know, it is, is it lust or love? I've done some segments on that with Joni is, the, yeah, I mean, the two are closely connected, but it is so important to know the difference if you really want a long term lasting relationship with with someone that where you don't have that that anxiousness constantly, which I, I think is horrible. I, I had to learn that the hard way. Yeah, I did, too. I did, too. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. Um, and I finally just, uh, it, I outgrew it, I guess it became, um, not so attractive anymore. I didn't like that feeling because falling in love, you're falling, you're falling. Ah, help me, help me. I can't. <laughs> right. I hated that. It was scary and it felt out of control for me because, oh my God, I'm vulnerable and I'm going to get hurt. 
and this is not going to end well. And there would all be all these thoughts, you know, in my mind. But again, that kind of we go back to attachment style because mm-hmm. that's that's very anxious attachment. Yeah. yeah. When you, when you have that that level of fear going into something that's kind of not, that's probably not a good thing. Yeah, exactly. Well, and the whole purpose of the discussion is to, if you recognize this, you know, in, in, in yourself to, you know, to, to determine whether or not, yeah, this, this is somebody you could actually love or is this somebody that's going to break your heart again? Which, which yeah, but who us. knows? We don't, we don't know that we don't, we go in, you know, you take it, you leap of faith, right? You, you just jump in, you hope that the net appears yeah. <laughs> and we don't know uh, it's risk. Love is a risk. There are no guarantees that, that you, you know, it's going to last yeah. or you're not going to get your heart broken, but you can't go in thinking that. And that's the, that's sort of a sign that uh, you need to work a little bit on your self-worth or your self-esteem so that you don't, you know, bring that stuff in with you because that's something that, that, the, that you're, the person you're dating can't really help you with that kind of starts with you. Right. Exactly. Well, and that leads us to the final one, which is, uh, are you filling in the blanks and slanting towards the positive that you're constantly making excuses why, you know, it's, it's okay what they did or, or, you know, that it's not as bad as you think. You mean um, excusing bad behavior? Well, it's 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 the hope that you finally met your soulmate. Oh, you know, confuses your sense of reason. That when there are things that that you know, pat or or stuff, they it doesn't have to be really bad. Yeah, I mean, bad behavior certainly, but just different behavior, something that you can't really live with, but you tell yourself that you can't or right. That, you know, that, that may be more like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So turning the other cheek. Yes. Uh, good, good question. Um, how much does one, um, should one accept? How much does one, um, cut slack for? I think to the extent, if it keeps pushing buttons in you, if it, if you hear a little voice inside you that, that says, mm, this doesn't feel good, or I don't like this, or it's making me feel bad, or he's got it, or she's got, you know, there's a little weird habit or quirk going on. Um, all good, you know, semi red flags to at least pay attention to. They may not be hard red flags. I'm saving the best for last because <laughs> I'll tell you what is the ultimate um, distinguisher between lust chemistry and con- true connection is sex and for that reason uh we go slow we take it very very slow because once you uh start getting intimate with someone it just changes the the landscape of everything it changes everything and uh not necessarily for the best so it, it does cloud your vision it, it's, it totally it, does and yeah. i know we're not making you know a moral judgment input decisions here uh it, it's just a fact that it clouds your vision you know no matter what you're religious or oh no moral no no standard. moral no 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 judgment no judgment here it's not about that it is literally about your the human human you know biology once you make that physical connection mm-hmm. that person you're banging is going to feel like your soulmate when they're not so that's why we go slow we take our time um, and we don't, you know, start, we don't jump into the sack too soon. I love the way you explain things. And, and, and a lot of this really applies more to women than it does men, the sex thing anyway, I think, don't you? Yes. Yeah. 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 There's, um, what is the dope? No, it's not dopamine. There's another chemical oxytocin. that oxytocin yeah. is real. Right. It oxytocin is. is a thing and it's, it's great. It's a bonding I think it's also the same chemical that that bonds with your babies. Is that true? I think so. Say? I think so. so okay. Something like with, with yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's definitely okay. a bonding, a bonding chemical. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's um, you can't fight human nature, people. Yeah. You can't <laughs> fight mother nature. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Well, and I guess the message here from men is that, you know, you're, if you are sleeping with someone right away, you might be creating this love connection or, or, or get somebody who's going to get really clingy when you don't really, you know, want that either. So lots of stuff to think about. They say here that, um, 
uh, a lot of uh, dating coaches will say that, uh, you know, to, in the early stages of dating, have a, a healthy, what did you say here, healthy skepticism and never give a stranger the benefit of the doubt. I think healthy skepticism is good. Never giving a doubt. I don't know. Just be smart. You know, you do, you do need to give people a chance, but that the real, you know, opening your heart and, and taking off the, or, or, you know, putting on the rose colored glasses for that, for that matter. Oh yeah. It comes later down the road when you want. Yes. To just yeah, no, we, we, we need rose colored glasses yeah. because otherwise you're going to be, you know, no one's going to be enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tough. It's it, it's a fine line, uh, but it's really something that we need to be aware of. Again, for me, the main message in this segment is once again, chemistry early, early on the first date. I mean, yeah, there's some things where you know that this is going to work. Just don't let that be the only thing, you know, the, on which you reject someone. And Trevor, I'll let you close. I believe in sort of love in, at first. I don't know. I believe it uh, in attraction at first sight. Mm -hmm. You, I mean, there's got to be some compelling something there that makes you want to mm -hmm. get to know the person, keep getting to know the person, see the person again, have another date, another date, another date. So yeah, so in, in, and yes, you eventually you want to rip their clothes off, right? I mean, you got to have that sort of animal feeling. We need to temper that, temper that, um, pace it, vet, observe, watch carefully, ask questions, talk, communicate. If you don't know if it's if it's chemistry or connection, is what they're saying hot and sexy and moving you? And is it interesting and compelling? I mean, that's that's connection. If you want to know more, if you like listening to them, if you like hearing what they say, that's all like great stuff that portends well for a for a future physical re uh, relationship. And I love that, that. What a great way to put that, Trevor. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. What. <laughs> Oh, well, we're at, we're at the end again. This is a topic we can talk about forever for now. We will link to all of your information. If, if anything resonated here with you, if you'd like to talk to Treva directly, she's a fabulous dating coach and maybe can help set you straight on your search for love versus lust. Treva, thank you so much again. And we'll see you again soon on Second I love Act. being here. Love you. Mwah.